So this is a story my carpentry teacher told us the other day. So my teacher lives in a three story house not including the basement, and up the street is some condos. In one of the condos is a family with children. One day my teacher's wife goes into their basement to do laundry, she smelled dirty diapers, I guess dirty diapers have a distinct smell. She recognized this ice and normal, and called my teacher explaining that it smelled like dirty diapers. Their kids are all grown up so obviously it wasn't coming from them. My teacher thought about it, and speculated someone up the street was flushing dirty diapers down their toilet. He said to his wife don't flush the toilet don't use the washer don't use the sink. He proceeds to call the person that put in the sewer system of his house. Their friend so he was willing to help him out. What the guy told him to do was plug every drain in his house with some sort of drain plug they sell at home improvement stores for this kind of reason. He even had to take his toilets off and plug the drain on them all except for his third floor. Wait for it. Once he did that according to his friend's instructions go to the third floor and flush every toilet. He said when he did this it was so clogged up in the pipes, water started coming from the drain of his bathroom, and he had to plug it up. Nothing was happening until he just heard this giant whoosh noise in his pipes. A couple minutes later fire trucks were showing up to the condos up the street and he knew it worked. The reason why this happened was since his dumb, but neighbors were flushing diapers down the toilet the way the sewer system works is that it goes downstream of elevation. So coming from the condos down the street then it comes off at an intersection and goes to his house. The diapers were caught at that intersection and actually going into his house, just the pipes luckily, unless they didn't take the right action. So by plugging all of the drains except the third floor, the liquid would need more pressure to travel up to the third floor, or by flushing all of the toilets and introducing a lot of pressure into the system, because it's at a higher elevation on the third floor, it shot all of the clogged up sewage back upstream, even though it's going upstream remember pressure all of his drains were plugged including the sewage system going down the street, so there's only one way to go, to the neighbor's house and into their house mayo. That's why you don't flush diapers down the toilet, they expand. Actually don't flush anything other than what should go down there your house could just be covered in crap next time because your neighbor knows what Hesh is doing. This happened a few years ago when I was in high school. My school had an after class sport training which was open for whatever student wanted to come, except the training was 3 hours after all classes ended, and since we weren't allowed to stay, we had to go home and come back before the training started. As a result the students that attended had to wait outside when they arrive until the school gate opened, so we would usually sit on the sidewalk and talk while we waited. That is when the problem started. A very petty woman lived across the street from the school, let's call her Mary. Mary did not like us sitting on the sidewalk, so she would shout at us and insult us even thought we weren't doing anything. We mostly didn't care and just ignored her. On a very hot day the sun made the concrete in front of the school too hot to sit on, so we all sat on the other side of the street, right in front of Mary's house. Not even two minutes later Mary was screaming at us to get out of her sidewalk, when we refused she went back inside her house. The next thing I felt was my back getting wet followed by my friend screaming. Mary had poured cold water on us from her window. We were very pissed, because not only we weren't be able to train while soaking wet, my friend's phone was in her hand got destroyed because of the water. We screamed every curse word existent at her until our coach arrived and told us to stop. We explained to him what happened, and he said that he would talk to the principal about it. We knew that probably nothing would happen to her so me decide to take it into our own hands. We thought a lot about how to get revenge, but since doing something illegal would get us expelled and possibly arrested we had to be smart about this. My friend noticed that Mary's sidewalk was very narrow, and since a year back we made a research about wheelchair accessibility we knew that it was against the law. That is when the revenge comes in. Before starting we measured Mary's sidewalk, and it was about 90 centimeters. The minimum by law was 150 centimeters. Perfect. With that knowledge my friend and I went to the Department of Infrastructure in town, and reported Mary's house. Just to be sure we asked what exactly would happen if she was breaking the law. The penalty was $500 per square meter, not in compliance per month counting the day she was notified. The penalty would double after 12 months. 
since the government doesn't lose an opportunity to make money we knew that all we had to do now was wait. Just for fun we also measured the length of the house, and it was about 500 centimeters. We did the math, and it would cost her about $1,500 every single month, until she took the entire front of her house down, and rebuilt it further back, which would also be very expensive. Lo and behold, three months later there were workers destroying the front of the house. The best part is, that she has no idea of who it was. One year ago, I was renting a house next to the most unpleasant neighbor I hope to ever experience. The only thing I liked about her was her cat, this freakishly adorable tabby who could grab even the most hardened criminal's heart by the balls. Every time I came home from work he would sidle up next to me for some TLC, which he never got from my neighbor. As far as I could tell, she just used the poor thing to keep away mice and play that is, be terrorized by her toddler grandkids on the weekends. The poor Furbaby looked severely underfed and always appreciated the meals I'd leave out for him on our back porch. Now, I have an indoor fur baby of my own, a tailless ball of energy, aptly named Goblin, and one day he managed to escape outside. Luckily I found him within a few hours, but by the next morning, what jumps on my lap? Not Goblin, alas, but a flea. And if my social butterfly cat had fleas, I was positive the next door fur baby had fleas too. Now, I already had a better history with this neighbor. In addition to being a twat rocket to her cat, she'd harassed my older parents who were helping me move in. Why? Because our U-Haul rental was blocking a sidewalk to nowhere in front of my house for all of 10 minutes. My parents are extremely pleasant people, my mom frequently gets thanked on customer service hotlines for being the rare kind soul in an ocean of impatient Karens. And this lady was berating them needlessly for ruining the community, ranting even longer than they'd been parked, until they eventually moved to an inconvenient and wholly unnecessary distance. Regardless of her twat rocket personality, I figured I'd warn her anyway in the best interests of her fur baby. When I knew she was at home the next day, I knocked on her front door. When she answered, no hello, just a scowl, I started to explain that my escaped indoor cat has fleas, and so there was a good possibility that her outdoor cat also had fleas. Immediately she berates me for letting my cat get fleas and snaps that she keeps her house very clean, unlike me, so there is no way her cat has fleas. I just loudly sided her and went back home as she continued to yell. You've never even been in my house, lady. And that's not how fleas work. All week I noticed her cat scratching himself raw and felt so bad for the little guy. I wanted to give him flea medication and a flea bath, but with my neighbor now watching me like a hawk and screeching like a banshee, if I even pet him anymore, I had to leave him alone. But, I realized, there was something I could do. You see, we shared the same landlord, who was very concerned about household pests, and instructed us to call him at the first sight of a bed bug, tick, etc. I also knew that my neighbor was keeping her cat a secret from the landlord to avoid paying the pet rent, as I'd overheard her bragging about this to a friend outside one day. So what do I do? I call up the landlord to explain the flea situation, and I make sure to add that my neighbor's cat has also been scratching like crazy. There's a pause. Did you say she has a cat? Yes, I assure him, she definitely has an indoor-outdoor cat. Turns out that my neighbor had harassed our landlord into replacing most of her carpet due to her alleged cat allergy. I don't know why the landlord caved into this, but it wasn't cheap. And now our landlord learned that not only had mad woman lied about an allergy to score a free renovation, but she hadn't paid pet rent in more than a year. Well, an exterminator gets caught, and our landlord himself shows up to oversee the whole thing. We had both received a flyer taped to our front doors giving notice that he would be coming to our houses on that date, but I may or may not have removed my neighbors, so she wouldn't be able to just hide evidence of her cat for a few hours. So our landlord arrives, and I listen gleefully with my window open as my neighbor tries to prevent him and the exterminator from entering. Eventually she allows him to come inside, where there is obvious evidence of a pet living there. I don't know exactly what transpired between her and the landlord, there must be other crapstons on her record, being such a nutcase, but a few months later I had a new next door neighbor. 
and guess who mad woman purposely abandoned during the move? Her poor fur baby, who became a much loved and flea free member of our house. Thank you for watching. Slap that like button and comment your opinion on these stories below. I'm waiting. Write that comment. Seriously. Have you written it yet? If you don't comment, you make a bunny cry somewhere. You're not that kind of person, I know. Anyways, peace out, and catch you tomorrow.